welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen and today I'm going to be talking about the PhotoPass photographer role in the Disney College program. I did the Disney College program in the spring of 2017 and my role was PhotoPass in Hollywood Studios. Today I'm going to just talk a little bit about that, um, tell you the day to day of that role, uh, what that role entails, and maybe even some tips and tricks that you can give during your interview to help you maybe uh, prove to a recruiter that that role is right for you. So let's get started. The PhotoPass photographer role are basically the photographers that you see in all four parks plus um, the resorts as well as the water parks. The college program participants are only trained to work in the four parks. If you get the photographer role, you will be assigned a park before you arrive. So I was assigned Hollywood Studios, which meant that all my shifts were scheduled in Hollywood Studios. However, once I completed my training, I was able to pick up or trade shifts in other parks, which I did do, so I was able to work at least one shift in every park. Uh, if you are hired as full-time or part-time, you can be trained to work other uh, things such as in the resorts or the water parks or special events like the marathons, but in the college program you won't be trained for those. Also each park has um, different types of like specialty photography and I'll get into that and that is something that you also need to be trained for. So the basics of the PhotoPass photographer role um, basically come down to three things. Uh, icon photography, character photography, and dining. So Icon photography is basically what it sounds like. You're taking photos in front of an icon. Um, so this icon can be um, big and recognizable, like each park has one of those. So uh, Cinderella's Castle, Magic Kingdom, the Tree of Life and Animal Kingdom, the Epcot Ball, and um, the Chinese Theater in Hollywood Studios. But then there are other uh, icons as well. So Hollywood Studios has the Tower of Terror, um, Animal Kingdom has Mount Everest. Um, even just pretty backgrounds are considered icon photography. That's icon photography, and that's pretty much only outside. Then you have character photography, and that is what it sounds like, taking photos with a character. So anytime you meet a regular, regularly scheduled character in the park, you know, Cinderella, Mickey Mouse, Daisy, Donald, they're going to have a photo pass photographer with them and so that is character photography. Um, there are a couple exceptions to that. Uh, Mary Poppins meets pretty regularly in Epcot, or at least she did when I worked there, but because Disney doesn't own the rights to Mary Poppins, um, at least in the terms of photography, we weren't allowed to take pictures with her. Same thing with, um, I think like Power Rangers or, some, like they don't really meet in the park, but there were a couple exceptions to that rule. Um, any character wondering, like the stormtroopers walk around in Hollywood Studios, but those that's not, um, that's just them interacting with guests, so they don't have a photographer. Or if a character is training, like sometimes you see the character spots in a car studios where characters are training, they don't have a photo pass photographer either because that's not a regularly scheduled meet. So that is the basics of what shifts you would get. You would either get an icon photography shift or a character photography shift occasionally, very, very rarely, at least for me, you would get a dining shift. And so they have the characters walk around while you're eating and they'll come and meet you and take a photo with you. Um, but each of those locations has one character that meets at a backdrop or, you know, a, a scheduled photo session. So when, for example, in Hollywood Studios, Hollywood and Vine is a restaurant that it has character dining. And it switches seasonally which character is the one that has the backdrop, but when I was there, it was mostly Mickey. So when you walked in, Mickey was there, you know, in his best Hollywood attire, and you'd get a photo with him. He had a photo pass photographer. The other characters did not. They just walked around the restaurant, and you can get photos of them on your personal cell de photo devices. So I barely worked a dining shift. Um, I think I had maybe one and I wasn't even scheduled for it. I think I traded for it. Um, so for me at least, uh, CPs or college program participants were really not scheduled for dining shifts. Um, mostly it was icon or character. Now each park also has some other places where you might find a photo pass photographer and it really depends on that park whether or not the college program participants get to partake in that. 
So speaking from Hollywood Studios, you also had Jedi training and that was its own thing and you needed special training for that. You also need special training for Star Wars Launch Bay, which was where you could meet Kylo Ren and Chewbacca and then eventually they had a BB-8. Those three characters needed special training. So I never got that training and I never worked there. And same thing with Jedi training, I didn't work uh, there because I was never trained for that either. Um, and that's basically where the, like you set, the kids sign up in the morning um, and they get to be Padawans um, that are training to be Jedis. And it's like a whole show, interactive show, it's really cool, and a photographer takes a bunch of photos. Um, I'll get a little bit more into that later because there is a third type of shift that you could work, or I guess I should say fourth. But at least for Hollywood Studios, it wasn't an exclusive shift, it was part of the icon shift. So the view is where you go to view your photos, buy your photos, print your photos, whatever it may be. Um, it is the computer station where you could scan your magic pan or your card um, and see your photos. So they have a view station in each of the four parks and Disney Springs. And so that's where you could go and you could buy um, a single print, multiple prints with different packages. Memory Maker um, was a still is a type of um, package you could buy that you could get unlimited downloads and unlimited uh, unlimited downloads and discounted prints for one package price for your whole vacation. Um, if you are a, somebody that takes a lot of photos, especially with characters, that could be worth purchasing, um, especially if you have a giant group with you. If you have a large um, family or multiple families with you on your vacation that you can split the cost, it would definitely be worth it. Um, I always recommend that you don't buy Memory Maker on your first day of your vacation because your photos will stay in your account for like 30 days after your vacation. So I would wait to the end of your vacation and see if the photos are worth purchasing, if there are more photos that you, if you took enough photos to even purchase in the first place and then you can always activate like purchase and activate the memory maker after your vacation and then get all the prints that's just my advice they also have a one day memory maker which is a much much cheaper rate and that is just all your photos from one day and same thing you could do that after your, va your vacation just choose which day that you want to purchase so that's just my advice um, and so when you worked um, in Hollywood Studios, when I was there, each shift rotated throughout the shift. That has since um, been changed. We were the only park that rotated um, when I was there. And when I was there, I was kind of under the impression that they were working towards moving the other parks towards rotation, but I guess that has changed and now none of the parks rotate. But basically, uh, an icon photography shift for me had certain rotations, so there were two icon photography shifts when I was there. Things have changed a little bit, especially with the opening of Toy Story Land and the soon to be opening of Star Wars Galaxy Edge. But um, you basically had Hollywood or you had um, Sunset. And th there were just a couple, like you were either taking photos with Chinese Theater or with um, Tower of Terror. And one of them had Donald and one of them also had, and one of them had Daisy. And then both of them also had a spot in the view, which the view was the best because it was air conditioned. So always keep that in mind if you're going for the photo pass roll, um, make sure that you're going to be okay standing in the hot Florida sun for hours. Now that's really only uh, with an icon roll because with the character rolls, a lot of the characters meet inside. Not all of them, but a lot of them, um, especially in other parks I've seen more so than even Hollywood Studios. Um, so in Hollywood Studios, you also had a couple shifts that were very character heavy. They weren't 100% characters, well one of them was, but um, they also had icons, but they were, instead of every every like spot in the that you could pick up being an icon, some of them were uh, characters. And characters were great for the reason that some sometimes they were air conditioned or shaded, and also just because they were, they tended to be more fun, like you just got to experience uh, little kids and families and people meeting characters that mean so much to them, so that was always really fun. Basically, I probably should have said this earlier, but uh, PhotoPass Photography role is one of three roles that falls under entertainment. So you have PhotoPass Photographer, Character Attendant, and Character Performer, and those three roles make up uh, Disney Entertainment. Um, so. 
we shared break rooms um, and had some training the same. Um, and I, th I personally just loved being in entertainment. I loved seeing, like, making magic and, and being with the characters. It was always just so fun, um, just to just to see the the little kids that even were dressed up like the character they were meeting. It was definitely really magical. There were times when it wasn't always magical, um, but overall I think it was one of the most fun roles that you can have in the college program. So let's talk training for the Photopaths photography role. What kind of experience do you need? Well, I'll talk about a little bit about me. So I was a film major in school. Um, I went to Quinnipiac University and I majored in film. And so I found that to be the case, so Hollywood Studios is the smallest park, so there were only about 16 college program participants, like CPs, so I pretty, I knew all of them, but I knew all 16 of us, like there weren't that many of us, um, so I want to say that the majority of us, it was their second or third program, and so it is easier, I feel like, to get PhotoPass when you've already done a program, so if you did a program and then you extended into PhotoPass, you came back for another program. Um, and then another large majority of us were film or photography or media majors, which I think just kind of helps to have that background in film or photography. But then there were there were like a couple people that um, just enjoyed photography or um, just kind of got this role. So it's not you don't have to have photography experience, but it definitely helps. Um, so once you get the PhotoPass photographer role, when you get down to Disney World for your college program, you obviously you have casting, um, which is they do your fingerprints and you sign some forms and what have you and whatnot. Um, then you have um, traditions, which is the you know welcome to Disney, um, some background on the company. Uh, everybody has traditions, and then you have welcome to operations and everybody has welcome to operations and that's another like four hours or so our tradition is like four hours or so um, and they're usually two separate days but they're back to back and then so welcome to operations is all about you know safety in the workplace how to properly pick something up like lift with your legs and how you should be standing like proper posture and um, in the case of an emergency and just all the that you know, compliance training that um, Disney's so great about training everybody uh, with. And then um, after that, you have more role specific training. So for me, I had Welcome to Entertainment because, like I said, Phone Pass is in entertainment. Um, and that was pretty magical. That was shorter, I think it was like two hours. Um, but we went into Magic Kingdom and we watched the um, the show, Mickey's Friendship Fair, which is the Magic Kingdom Castle show, um, and because it, we were observing entertainment um, in real time. So that was really cool um, to be able to get paid to go in the park and watch a show. Um, and then we just walked around and we observed like entertainment interacting, um, whatever it may be, like a photo pass photographer making magic with a magic shot, or you know, a character walking around meeting guests, character attendant, um, which are their true heroes, I tell you. Um, and so that was, that's Welcome to Entertainment. And then after that, you go into really role-specific training. So for me, it was four days of photo pass training. So I believe the first two days were off-site at the training facility in Celebration, Florida. And so there were, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 of us that had the same arrival date that we're training at that point. And I think like 10 of us were CPs and then one person was a part-time uh, person because it it's all the same um, training. And so that was really, you know, what are the, what is a camera? Like, this is a lens. Like, this is, you know, how you use this camera. They use Nikon D7700s, I believe. Um, that is what they had when I was there. So I have a, a Nikon, so it was pretty easy. The controls are very similar, um, but yeah, it definitely helps if you have experience using a DSLR camera. Um, so then uh, we had that training, you know, what is 
all the different things like focus and what's out of focus and just the basic basics of photography and um, then the second day they went into more of what Disney requires so again this is when I was there this was two years ago um, Disney had a photo flow system so that basically every single photographer you were going to get the same selection of photos so with an icon you were to take two wide shots and then one medium shot one close-up and one creative and um, that was kind of the standard you could take more you could take more photos you could it wasn't really it was pretty frowned upon to take less than that um, but you could take more um, especially with the creative a lot of times um, if a family was really having fun I would take a lot more creative so a creative shot could be a magic shot which is where the computer um, automated character it could be a just fun shot. Their their go to is if a family walks up and they're all wearing like Incredibles t shirts, like you should pose them like superheroes. Um, different things like that, you know. If they're uh, if they if it's a family, maybe get just mom and dad or just the kids, like different things like that. So I would often do that where I would split up groups of people if a big group came, so they could get a wide selection of photos. Um, and so that's kind of what they teach you. And then day three and four are park specific photo pass training. So I was the only one in my training group for Hollywood Studios. Everyone else was either Epcot Animal Kingdom or Magic Kingdom. So I was the only one training on day three and four with my trainer um, in Hollywood Studios. But that was fine. It was fun. It was got to learn everything. So in that way, so on day three, of training they took me through Hollywood Studios and showed me every single place where a photo pass photographer would be um, and just like so I could get a feel of where and then where everything is and then they also showed me where they like the whole park in general because often photo pass photographers are asked directions because they are the first cast member that people see on the street when they're looking for directions or recommendations um, so I had to get a feel of the whole park, where the smoking areas are, where the bathrooms are, um, where all the characters meet, where all the attractions are, just different things like that. Um, I wasn't quizzed or anything. It's really easy to pick up. So we did that on day three as well as started um, taking some like test photos uh, without real guests. And then I don't remember if it was day three or day four that I actually started taking photos with guests. It was probably day three. I don't, not, not really sure. Um, and then day four, I think we learned about um, like the tripod. If you've never used a tripod before, they they teach you everything like you've never done it, used it, touched it before, um, so that everybody has good training. Um, so I was a film major. I had touched a tripod before, but you know they taught me how to safely carry a tripod and whatnot because some of the positions do have tripods. Um, and then at night, every position has tripods because um, uh, the motion blur would be too much. The camera has to be still because we um, bump the uh, ISO so much to get more light in the shot because it's so dark. Um, and that's something that they teach you again, but that's a separate training. So you do those four things at those four days training and then you're good to go. So then you'll get scheduled for only icon photography positions. If you were scheduled for something like Hollywood Studios had a rotation, it would just, the computer would automatically or the coordinators would automatically set it so that when I rotated I would skip a character position. And I was also only scheduled during the day for my first two weeks. So after about two or three weeks in the job I was scheduled for my night slash view training and that's when I got trained to, to do photography at night which are different settings. Um, and the tripod and you only do two photos because it's so bright that doing full photo flow would just be like eye damaging so you just do two two wide shots unless some unless they ask for more which you know some some guests did and then you just do more um, and then view training which is like I said the computer system where you can print photos and such so I wasn't allowed to work the view either my first three weeks there I worked the view um, after I got night view training and that was really easy and they, they teach you everything you need to know and I wouldn't freak out about remembering settings or, or remembering rotation or remembering literally anything they have little pamphlets that you can keep in your little pocket and anything that you need to know can be in that pamphlet like 
So I kept all the pamphlets that I would need, um, which it's really easy to remember everything. But if you ever forgot, like, oh, hey, like, you know, the, what is, because some of the locations change based on settings, because um, quality control goes through every so often and make sure, because every location is a little different. Um, so they make sure that the best settings are being used for each location. Um, so if you're going to a location you're like, oh man, I don't remember exactly which setting should be here, you can just look and you're like, oh, it's right, boom, 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 and then you set your camera real quick and it's super easy. If you're ever getting bombarded um, by guests or you're just trying to set your settings, it's really not a problem. Most guests are very understanding. You just say, one second, I just need to set my camera and you're all good. If you're really nervous about that, you can step off stage and set your camera before you get to that location. Um, they're really good about letting you do that as well. Um, you also carry a water bottle with you. They give you a water bottle to carry with you um, at all times so that you're not dying of thirst. And if you run out of water, you can easily step off stage and get some water. If you really have to pee, you can step off stage and go to the bathroom. Um, it's nothing crazy. Um, they're very understanding. They, they advise you to call base every time you step off stage just in case the rotation comes through and they can't find you or we have um, support comes through every now and then with batteries or um, whatever it is that you may need they ask you if you're good um, so just in case they come through and they're looking for you they do ask you to call base um, and again the number for base is even in your little pamphlet too so you don't even have to remember that although it is very easy I think it's like four digits um, for the extension on the Disney lines um, so very easy um, after you're a couple weeks after that, so it was almost, um, it was, uh, I want to say like five or six weeks in, um, I was scheduled for character training. And so then I got character trained and, um, you know, that's sometimes inside, sometimes outside. You have two different kinds of characters. You have fur characters and face characters. Um, so fur is, um, you know, uh, Mickey, Donald, Daisy, uh, face characters are, like any of the princesses, you know, Cinderella, Ariel, Moana, they're all face. It's pretty self-explanatory, um, kind of see which is fur, which is face. Um, but we had training for both of those because they're a little bit of different interactions. Um, and just, yeah, so that was pretty easy. That was one day. It was really fun. I actually had character training on Valentine's Day and I worked with Snow White and the Prince. It was really cool. Um, and yeah, they teach you all about that. And then after that, you're fully trained for what you will probably get training for. Um, occasionally, like I said, depending on when training falls, depending on how long you're there, if you extend, if you're fall or spring advantage. I was only spring, so I was only there January through May. But just depending on a lot of factors, your park may train you four more. So none of the CPs I worked with were ever trained for um, Star Wars Launch Bay while they were CPs. Um, but I know that a couple months after I left, some of the CPs that came in were trained for Star Wars Launch Bay. So it really just depends. Um, but that's the basics of training that you will receive and there's nothing to be nervous about. They will teach you everything you need to know. I know I was afraid I was going to ruin people's vacation photos. You will not ruin people's vacation photos. You might take a bad photo. It happens and people get that. And then you just take another one. Can you be honest? You say, hey, like I don't think that was a great photo. Let me take another one. One thing that's actually very strange is because the photos automatically upload, when you take them, you can't see them. And that was a little nerve wracking when I first started because you literally cannot see your photos. You just are taking photos blindly and hoping that they're coming out right. Um, but you can view them later, which in training they do make you do. So you can kind of see, you know, what's the deal. Because when I first started, I was taking some of my photos were a little cropped or they were um, like tilted a little bit because you are taking them pretty quickly because people don't want to stand there for 10 minutes smiling like it hurts. So you got to learn, you know, but it's pretty easy to pick up on it. It's, it's all fine. Um, so that was great. That's the basics of the photo pass photography role. So in, so in my interview, um, I was only asked, um, like one or two questions as it pertained to PhotoPass um, because I did put high interest in that role but I put high interest in like 10 roles. I think the, they asked if I 
um, had experience in photography in which I told them that I really didn't but I had a ton of experience in videography and that I owned DSLR camera so I was really used to using it. Um, and that was pretty much the only question they asked but I also did really specify on my skills that I, in my previous positions that I had had throughout high school and whatnot, it was like a soccer coach and whatever it was, like I specified, oh, like standing for long periods of time, working outside in the heat, different skills like that. Like even if you don't have um, photography skills or photography experience, definitely uh, exemplify the skills that are related to that role so that you know you could do it. So, you know, that's exactly it. Standing for long periods of time, working outside in the heat. I think they actually did ask me about that in my interview, like, but that pertains to a lot of roles, um, working outside in the heat. Um, you know, lifting and carrying a lot of equipment. I think our entire rig was like 15 pounds, which it's a lot. Like, for when you're standing for a long time, you definitely like at the end of the day you feel that 15 pounds because you have a harness which does help it distributes the weight of the camera so you have your camera you have your harness you have your camera you have um your water bottle which when it's full it's pretty heavy like that's attached to your belt loop then you when i was there we had um two separate th uh, things that have now been combined into one so we had a barracuda which was used for scanning um, like your magic band stuff, but then we had um, like a PDA which was used to um, actually upload the photos and whatnot and like set the settings for magic shots and um, different things like that. They have since combined those, so now your PDA um, does all that and it scans, um, but still that's like you know on your belt loop. And then you also have like a little, or you you either have like a little package on your belt loop with your batteries and whatnot, um, cause you need extra flash batteries, extra camera batteries, extra, when I was there, bare coated batteries and PDA battery, but now it's probably, you know, one less battery. Um, but you had all those batteries. And so I like to distribute them and I put them all in my pockets rather than carry another thing on my belt loop, but that was up to the person. Um, and then we also had a rain pouch that we had on the back. Um, and so it really kind of varied by park, but Hollywood Studios made you wear your rain pouch every single day, even if the rain was 0% because Florida is really weird and it rains all the time. Um, and it can rain for like five seconds. And when you have like very expensive equipment on you that cannot get wet, um, they want you to be safe. So we had a rain pouch um, in like a, a pouch. Um, I can post a photo here of kind of, this is me working and if you kind of look it's really hard to see. You kind of look, I'm wearing the rain pouch um, behind me. And there were like occasional days where I would like take it off if I definitely knew I was not going to need it or if I was working inside all day like I wouldn't wear it, um, which was super, super rare. There was like literally no uh, job where I would be working inside all day. But you know, some days I just really did not want to wear it because it's kind of annoying and it's really hot. It makes it really sweaty. Um, when it's like on your lower back. But, so you have a lot of things um, and you have to be able to wear all that and, you know, be okay with it. So you have to have some kind of, you know, strength. I wouldn't say a lot of strength, but you know, you have to have a little bit. And those are the basics of the photograph photographer role in the Disney College program. If you watched all the way through, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you learned a lot about this awesome role. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or send me a direct message. I'm more than happy to answer them or to talk more about the role. Um, and if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up or hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be posting a lot more videos like this, um, talking about some of my really cool experiences that I have had. So look out for that. I have some great content coming out soon. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, guys.